everyone and welcome to the video that I've been wanting to record for the longest time and I finally, finally can. This bot has made me the most money and funnily enough makes my customers the most money. And here's how. So a couple of months ago, I got messaged by an auditor on LinkedIn and he told me about a problem that his company faces. He works at a very, very big company and basically what happens, each time they get a new employee, there's quite a few problems for the HR team. Number one, the new new accountant forgot a lot about what they learned at university. Second, they want to know a lot of things about the company, like their work hours, when do they get leave, when are the holidays, and some things like say you're busy with someone's books and you forget something, you don't know how to do it. And then basically the HR team grew to such a size, it gets too expensive. And there's just constantly new employees rolling in because it's such a massive company. Basically, you have to hire new people for HR constantly and it gets very expensive. So he gave me, okay, this is the problems, all right, that we have, how can you solve it? And basically we made a chatbot that is just absolutely incredible. It, um, because we're in South Africa, we have a lot of a lot of acts and a lot of laws. And basically all those acts and laws, the public ones, are about 41 or 42 documents, which comes to just short of a thousand pages. Now the HR team knows them by now, not all of it, of course, however, they know generally where to look when a new employee asks a question. But the thing is, the HR team, there's just not enough, all right? So what we basically did, we took all those documents and we put them into a chatbot. It took quite a while to get all those documents into the chatbot and it being able to respond because the way that the chunking works sometimes is problem. So we had to figure it out how to do the chunks properly. Basically, we got the chunks properly now and basically we deployed into a chatbot. It's got so many features and I cannot wait to show you guys this bot because me personally, I learned so much when building this bot. Right, so here we have it. I just removed the names just so that my editor doesn't have to spend the time blurring out. But... As you probably know, this is where the bot press sign-in system came from. The guy that I was building this with, he basically said that, okay, I kind of want this to be a little bit more secure. Can you do a login system? And at first I thought that, I mean, that's just ridiculous. I mean, it's bot press. It's not like, it's not like the most custom platform on earth, but we ended up making it happen. Well, I ended up making it happen. But anyway, please enter your business email to proceed. So we just see Bartis at x.com because I removed it. So yeah. Business emails, username, you basically choose what is the way to authenticate. We just choose the business emails because then why we choose the business emails is because then we can very easily send in them passwords. So please enter your password. So I'd like to show this very quick, but let's say you get your password wrong. This is not an OTP system and it will not block you if you have too many attempts because it's not the security concern is not that big with a, a training bot. So now let's first say email me my password. What it's then going to do, it's going to see that, okay, there we go. An email has been sent to your batch at x.com containing your password. Please enter your password. What we could actually do and what I'm actually experimenting with is how to have a user reset their password because I actually think that there is a way to do this using BotPress's new features. Anyway, please enter your password. So if we go check my emails, we will see. And here we have it, the password of Mr. Funimato. So we click on it. And then we're going to see, okay, hello, Mr. Funamarva, your password 596959. So we'll copy that. And we'll paste it into our bot. And then it's going to let us in. Great stuff. The feature works perfectly. There we go. If at any point you would like to end the conversation, type end. We might remove that feature because you don't really need to end the conversation. We can just have an inactivity timer, which is going to go off and then it's going to end our conversation automatically. But for the sake of it, if the bot is not able to answer your question, type help and an email will be sent to the appropriate department. If you would like to give feedback on the bot, type feedback. Now, let's first go over our features and then we will go into some questions because that is, the, in my opinion, the main selling point here because we have such a large database and large knowledge base it was a lot of effort and a lot of, not a lot of developers know how to do it properly a lot of developers don't know how proper chunking works and how to split chunks overlap top k characters and whatever they don't know how it works i had to learn the hard way which is why this project made me so much money all right so let's first go over the features let's go over the help feature first so if we type help let's assume that the bot was not able to answer my question. Then I can type the word help. It's gonna say, who would you like to reach? Basically, we can choose HR, IT, auditing, quality control, or other. So let's say we choose IT. Let's say there's some problem with the bot. What would you like to ask the IT team? So then you can say, 
the bot is not responding. That would, this would be an email to me directly so that I know, okay, there's an issue with this bot. And then what it's gonna do, it's gonna send an email to the IT team, an email with your query has been sent. Basically, I don't have to like show every single one of these ones because basically it just sends an email to the IT team linked to a specific email address and then the IT team knows. So, no. right, so now let's type the word feedback because what that's going to do, it's going to send the email directly to the chatbot team with like, say a user has a suggestion for a new feature, like say, okay, we can, I'd like to do this. Can you add this as a feature? This is just so it can be nice and quick and that, well, you don't have to send an email every single time. Great, how can we improve our bot? So it'll just may make it uh, faster. Doesn't really matter. It's gonna do the exact same thing as with the help. It's just gonna send an email to the team and that's gonna be it. All right, so now let's test out another feature. Is there anything else we can help you with? Now let's check out the, the answering. So basically we have, I'm not sure currently where the documents is, but we can ask it a bunch of questions which I know off the top of my head, which the guy that I built this for actually asked it. So he asked us, how do I determine the, oh, spell, determine the fair value of an intangible asset? Asset, whoops, asset, there we go. Now, Stack AI, we're using 3.5 Turbo 616K just for the sake of speed because we could GP, we could use GPT-4, but it's just not quite as quick. According to, oh yes, also, it references the documents specifically and we ask it to do that so that, let's say you want a little bit more info and you don't really want to ask the bot, you can go to the document specifically. IS38, the fair value of an intangible asset can be determined in the variability in the range of reasonable fair value measurements. Basically, it's perfect. It's the perfect answer. And as you might have noticed that we don't get a question for do you have another question? Most developers don't know and they don't really care to innovate. However, we have found a way here at Botnition to make it so that it works like a chat GPT. We try to bring it as close as possible to chat GPT. It was pretty important for us. But anyway, uh, the South African documents is Iferous and IS and I think there's a couple acts as well. So let's ask it something about the Popey Act, which is pretty important here in South Africa. So we'll ask it just a general general summary. Explain the Popey, uh, Popey. it's a protection of personal information act as if I'm five. Let's say you really don't understand it like at all. It's pretty straightforward, but let's say you really don't understand it and you want a very quick explanation. Then it's going to say, okay, the Protection of Personal Information Act, Perpy Act, is a law that helps to keep our personal information safe. Personal information is things like our names, addresses, and phone numbers. The Perpy Act acts as, act makes sure that companies or organizations have to ask for our permission before they can collect and use our personal information. Basically, it dumbs it down so that literally anybody can understand it. And we have very strict rules when it comes to this bot. It cannot answer any irrelevant questions. It is very, we, we are very specific in the system prompt. Now I'd like to show another feature. So let's say we ask a completely irrelevant question. What is the fastest car in the world? I'd like to actually explain what happens here. So we give a very specific instruction to our bot. We say, okay, if you cannot answer a question, include the word sorry in your response. Why do we, why, why do, we do that? Well, we have two pretty important reasons. Number one, we can write a string of, oh, sorry, a series of different code, which basically searches for the word sorry in the bot's response. If it finds the word sorry, it means that the bot was not able to respond. What we do then, we send that question to a Google Sheet, meaning that only the questions that were not able to be answered are logged, not the ones that were answered, because that would mean you have to, would, have to pay for Google Sheets, which is just an expense, which you don't really need. And number two is that we do a chat GPT fallback. So if the, uh, the, the code finds the word sorry in the bot's response, we send it to chat GPT and then we can say, okay, the bot was not able to answer the question, but here's ChatGPT's response. An answer to your question was not found on knowledge base. Here is ChatGPT's response. As of 2022, the fastest car in the world is SCC Turatara, which at 2022, it was actually, which reached a top speed of 316 miles per hour. Is it perfect? No, because it's a ChatGPT. It's a knowledge only goes to, I think it's 18 September 2021, so it's not completely accurate. But yeah, that is basically the cool feature. So basically, just a very quick summary. 
If our code finds the word sorry in the bot's response, it means that it was not able to give an accurate answer. What we do then, we log the query in a Google Sheet and we ask ChatGPT to, uh, to see if it knows the answer. All right, so there you guys have it. It is the audit training, staff training HR bot. I really, really love this project and I ho really hope I can sell it to a few more people because just the sheer amount of money that, thing, that this thing saves the company and it makes me win-win situation. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next video and I got a pretty exciting news. The website is currently up for review. Within 24 hours, it's gonna be up and it's gonna, well, it looks fantastic. I'll share it on LinkedIn as soon as it's up and I'll see you guys in the next video.